Hello everyone, welcome to my Power Automate desktop series. In this video, I will show you how to merge multiple CSV files into a single CSV file. There is no easy way to merge CSV files in Power Automate desktop. There is no CSV merge action as such. So let's look at what we will try to build today. So first off, once the flow begins, we'll need to know what the CSV files that we need to merge are, so the original CSV files. If we don't get them or the user presses cancel, we'll need to stop the flow. We'll need to then check if there's at least two CSV files. So merging means we'll need to have at least two. If we don't get that, we'll just display a message and stop the flow immediately. But let's say we got all at least two files, we need to know what the final merged CSV's file name should be. So we'll get that as well from the user. The next important point is to understand whether those CSVs have headers or not. If they have headers, we'll need to do an extra step of taking one of those CSV file and stripping out the header and saving it to a merged CSV file. And then after that step, go through each CSV file, strip out the header row, get only the data row and save it to the merged CSV file. If there are no headers, this process is uh, relatively simple, which is take each CSV file, take the data from each CSV file and save it to the merged CSV file. And that would be the end of our flow. So let's do it. Let's start coding on Power Automate Desktop. Before we start building our flow on Power Automate Desktop, Let's have a quick look at the CSV files that we will be working with today. So in my CSV folder on my CSV drive, I have two files, 1.csv and 2.csv. 1.csv has a header row, column 1, comma, column 2, and then two data rows, 1.1, 1.2, 2.1, 2 2.2. While my 2.csv file also has a header row, the row number two is empty, it's just a comma, and then row number three and four have data. On Power Automate Desktop, let's create a new flow. Let's call it CSV Merge. So we'll start this flow off by requesting for the original file. So display, we'll take the select file dialog, drag it onto here select csv files i'm going to mention my csv folder as the initial folder i'm going to restrict the files to just csv allow multiple selection original csv files original csv files button i need access to this button to make sure that the user has not pressed cancel so let's do that right away if button not equal to cancel. So they have not pressed cancel, then we can proceed. The next step is to see if we have enough text files, CSV files, CSV files dot count greater than one, right? If it's not greater than one, we need to display a message. So else, else means if not greater than one, let's display a message. Not enough CSVs require at least two CSV files to merge. Error icon i don't need this variable gonna disable that save right let's quickly run this to make sure the program is working so if i select one csv file i get my error message perfect so let's move on so let's assume we've got more than one file so the first step would be we need to save the original CSV files directory because I'll need that later on to save the final merge CSV file. So I'm going to name it as CSV directory. And this part's a little bit tricky, so please follow carefully. 
So we select the original CSV files variable and then square bracket open zero square bracket close dot directory. What this means is that once we get the two files which is saved in this variable to access one of those files, so the first file, I need to put zero as the index. If I want to access the second file, I'll put one as the index and so on. So CSV file zero dot directory gives me the, the file path for the first CSV file. In this case, both of them are the same, so it doesn't really matter, but I'm gonna say zero because I'll know that there is at least one file. So save. The next step is to ask whether the CSV files have headers or not. So display, this time I'm gonna say display select from list because I know it's just a yes or no question. So files have headers. Do the CSV files have headers? Yes, no. I'm gonna limit it to the list. I need these variables, so I'm going to say headers, question, answer. I don't need the index, but I do need the result of the button. So headers, question, button. So again, as we normally do, we need to check if cancel was pressed. Button not equal to cancel. Perfect. So we'll then need to ask what the merged file name should be. So again, a display message, display input dialog in this case, because it's just a file name that we're asking for. So merged CSV file name, what should the merged CSV files name be? Let's give it a default name of merged to CSV. Save that merged CSV file name. Merged CSV file name button. Again, the usual stuff. We need to check if they pressed cancel. merge CSV file name button not equal to cancel. Perfect. So let's run it and make sure what we've done so far works. So select two files, run it. Does it have headers? Yes or no? I'm going to say yes. And then what should the merge CSV files name be? Okay. Yep. It works perfectly. So let's save that always keep saving your files. We don't want to lose all the hard work that we've done so far. All right, so the next step. We know we have the files. We know whether it has headers or not, and we know what the final file name should be. So we've got all the components needed to do the merging. So let's do it then, right? So if, so we're here right now, the user has not pressed cancel. So the next question is, if, the header question answer is equal to yes. We need to do something. And if it's no, we need to do something else. So I'm gonna say else here, right? And then let's solve the first part first, which is the header equals yes question. Sorry, this header equals yes path, and then the header equals no path, right? So first step, as we know, is to get the header from one of those files, right? So first we'll need to read from the CSV file, Put that there. I'm going to get the original CSV file, but I'm going to just get the first file, just like how we did before, square brackets and a zero in between. Encoding will be UTF-8. Here we can choose the separator as comma under the advanced section and the variable can be, because 
we're going to have another table. I'm going to say first CSV table. Save. And then I want to write the header to a file. So I'm going to say header, write text to file. And the file path will be the final destination, the merged file names path. So I already have file path here. Where is it? Um, CSV directory, there you go. And then the, what should I write, right? So that would be the CSV table and only the first row. Same thing again, square brackets, zero in between. Here, I'm gonna say overwrite existing content and not append because if this is the header file, I wanna overwrite whatever file is already there. Keep the encoding to UTF-8 and save. So now we should have, all right, sorry. So this one should be file path. So I'm gonna say backslash merged file name, right? Perfect. So that's the error message. It was telling me that it should be a file, not a directory. So I just provided a directory and then backslash here and then the merge CSV file name. So save. Perfect, the error is gone. I'm gonna run it. I'm gonna run, select both those files, open. It's gonna ask, do I have headers? I'm gonna say yes, because that's what I'm testing right now. Keep the same file name done right so let's look at that merge csv file and make sure we have our header saved there as you can see we have the merge.csv file generated and it just has the header row column one comma column two back on power automate desktop now we need to continue to build out this portion which is the header question answer equals yes portion so the next section or the next action we need to do is go over each of those files. And for that, we use the for each loop. We're gonna put it right there. Here, we're going to go over each of those CSV files. Let's call it um, current CSV file or one CSV file, it doesn't really matter. What happens is we're gonna loop over these files. So the first file, then the second file, and at each time we'll just have one of those files in this variable. So I'm gonna save that. One of those CSV files, what do I need to do? I need to read from CSV. Read that CSV file into a table. So, I'm going to select the current CSV file, advanced. I'm gonna say the first line contains column names, right? Because I want to, this is the par, uh, This is the portion where we are actually stripping out the header row. I'm gonna keep that as a comma. So what happens is the table name actually becomes column one, comma, column two, etc. So I'm gonna keep that. Let's call this the current CSV table, just to keep that uh, terminology going, current CSV table. So now we've got a table with the contents of that one CSV file. We have to loop through each of those rows. So current CSV table, So let's call it CSV row, right? Because each table has a row and we're just going over each of those rows. So for each CSV row in the current CSV table, I'm gonna write that to the merge CSV file. So the file path would be again, CSV directory, backslash, merge CSV file name. I'm going to save the row. So let's find that CSV row. I'm gonna append. I'm not going to overwrite, I'm gonna append because I know there's already a file there with the header. 
encoding will be UTF-8 and save. So let's run this once to make sure that we have our program working exactly as it should. So we have three files now, so I'm just going to select one and two. I'm going to say yes, keeping the same file name. You can see it's going over each of those files and saving it. Perfect. Let's go over to the file, the merge CSV file and see what has happened. As you can see, the program has done its job. It's taken contents from the first file, which is 1.12.1 and the second file, the empty row and 3.1, 4.1. So perfect. Our program is working perfectly if there are headers in our CSV file. So the next step is to build out this second portion, which is if the header, if there are no headers in the CSV file. So the only difference here is we don't need to actually write these two portions. We're going to start off right from here. We could copy and paste, but I'm just going to write it once more so that uh, you all have an understanding of how it works. So I'm going to iterate over the original CSV files. I'm going to call this current CSV file. So I'm iterating or going over each of those text files again, reading it. So here I'm going to read again from the CSV file. So current CSV file. But here I'm not going to mention that the first line has column names because this is the portion where we are saying that the headers do not exist in our CSV file. So that's the difference between the first and the second path. So I'm going to say comma, save that. I'm going to say current CSV table. All right. So we got our CSV table ready. Perfect. Next is another for loop to go over the CSV table. CSV row. And then write the text to file. Oops, and this is the file path actually. So I'm going to say CSV directory backslash merge CSV file name CSV row. Again, we're not going to append, uh, overwrite anything. We're just going to append if the file exists UTF-8 save. You know, I forgot to save this earlier, so I'm going to save it now. Perfect. And let's run it. So what I'm going to do here now, I'm just going to delete this file. Right. And then I'm going to do this program again. So in this case, I'm testing the portion where there are no headers, I'm going to select no. And as you can see, and as you will see, is that now it's gone to this section, the else portion. And it's done its thing. Let's go over to the CSV files, the merge CSV file, and see whether our program has done its job properly. As you can see, we have our merge CSV file back here again. I'll open that. Wonderful. So this is our first file, and this is our second file. So our program is working exactly as it should. So thank you for watching. This is how you merge multiple CSV files into a single CSV file. I hope you had fun and thank you very much.